Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome everyone in today's class for the first intermediate uh, grade. Our textbook is Super Goal 2 and today we will, we co uh, we will cover what uh, school like uh, grammar. This lesson will be presented uh, by me, teacher Mazen Harbi, and the sign language by Mr. Saleh al -Ajan. So let's begin. Our objectives in today's lesson, we hope that at the end of this lesson, you will be able to use symbol present for statements and question, and also to use adjectives and connect each person to his uh, description. Before we start, let's make uh, a quick revision uh, on our last lesson. Last lesson, we have been introduced to different uh, school subjects, and also we have learned how can we express our opinion about those subjects. For example, we have seen uh, Carl when he has uh, uh, different uh, school subjects like uh, math, geography, health, physical education, English, science, computer science, art and history. And we said that uh, we need to express or give our opinion for those uh, subjects using those uh, adjectives. For example, we can say, I gave uh, my opinion about this and I said, I think math is challenging. I think math is challenging. And also I give uh, my opinion of another subject. I said, I think art is fun. Also, I think English is easy. It's flexible. It is easy to learn. And we also said that you can make similar statements or similar sentences. You can express your opinion by using the word, I think, and choosing any of these subjects and also using any of these uh, adjectives. Also, we have another exercise where we said that you can ask other people about their opinion. For example, you can ask your classmate or your family member whether they like the, a certain subject. For example, do you like math? And he will respond using one of the subjects that we already have. Yes, I like math. It is easy. Or no, I don't like it. It is difficult. So you can choose uh, different adjectives as we have learned for the first time. And also, uh, not only this, not only we talk about the school subject, but also we talked about uh, a description of different people. When we said that or when we have a question like, what does he like or what does he look like? For example, when we said that, does Matt have a blonde hair? And the answer was, no, he doesn't. Does he play football? Yes, he does. Here, where we have introduced two different friends, and each one of them has his own descriptions, his own qualities, and we learn how to make questions. Question like this. What do they look like? And we said this uh, particular question means or looking for an answer regarding appearance, regarding a uh, look. For example, when I said, what does he look like? Uh, people will answer by, uh, he is thin, he is tall, he is short. We're talking here about the look. And the other question, what are they like? Here we're talking about uh, uh, their behavior, their qualities. We can say, for example, they are friendly, uh, they are easygoing, uh, they are angry, and a lot of uh, adjectives we can use. In our today's lesson, I would like to start it with uh, a question. So, do you know people, maybe a family member or a classmate or people you may know who speak different languages? Other than Arabic, of course, do you know people who speak different languages? I'll uh, talk about myself. I actually, for myself, I speak English. And Ahmed, my friend, speaks uh, Spanish. I, teacher Mazen, speak English and my friend Ahmed, he speaks Spanish. Did you notice something here that we used for the first sentence when I talk about myself, I said, I speak. And when I talked about my friend Ahmed, I said, Ahmed speaks. So what changes between those two verbs, speak and speaks? Very good. In the other one or the other verb here, we added S. But why did we add S to this verb and not the first one? Let's have a look at uh, our grammar rule for today. Our grammar rule for today is uh, regarding the simple present tense. 
And in simple present tense, when we talk about affirmative or regular sentences, we usually don't add any uh, or we don't make any changes to the verb when we use those subject pronouns. I, you, we, they. And we make changes with the other uh, subject pronoun. So for the first four subject pronouns, we don't add anything to the verb. For example, we would say, I speak English, you speak English, we speak English, and they speak English. But with, other, uh, with the other subject pronoun, he and she, in this case, we add, an, uh, we add S to the verb. We say, he speaks English, she speaks English. So again, when we have those uh, four subject pronouns, I, you, we, they, we don't add or we don't make any changes to the verb. We use the verb as it is. I speak, you speak, they speak. But when we use he and she, we should add S to the verb. We would say, he speaks, she speaks. And we will have or we'll see more example of this. More example of this, not only the verb uh, speak, but also we have different verbs. Like, uh, for example, here, I play, you play, they play. Also, write, I speak, I play, I write. So, as you notice here, we don't make any changes to the verb. Why? Because we are using those subject uh, pronouns. But with the other pronouns, he and she, we should add S to the verb. We say, he speaks, he plays, he writes. Another, uh, uh, those we call them a uh, regular verb. Regular, it means they are regular, they follow one rule, which is add S to the verb when you see he and she, or when you are referring to a third person in he or she. We have uh, another type of verbs, we call them irregular verbs that do not have a system or uh, they are not regular. They have their own form. For example, have. For those four subject pronouns, we would say, I have, for example, I have a book. You have a book. We have a book. Or also the verb uh, has with he and she. He has a book. He has a brother. He has a car. So the first three verb here, we call them regular verb. And the other one here on the red, we call it irregular verb that do not have a system. So it has its own form. It has its own form when using a third person pronoun or a singular uh, uh, pronoun. Now, this is we're talking in, if, in case the sentence is affirmative, that is not negative. But uh, what do we do with the negative sentences? We will see it after this. Remember that some verbs that ends in Y, we change it to I-E-S. For example, if we have the verb uh, study, for example, and we want to use it for the third singular uh, person, we would say studies. He studies math. He studies English. And also verbs that ends in CH or S and H, we add ES. For example, teach, it becomes teaches, and brush, it becomes brushes. But do all the verbs that ends uh, with Y, we should change it to IES? Like, for example, the verb we have seen here, play. Here in this case, we didn't change it, uh, the uh, Y letter, to IES. Why? Because here we have one exception. When you have a verb that ends with Y, but uh, uh, followed by a vowel, by a vowel, A, I, uh, O, E, or U, in this case, we don't make any changes to the letter Y, and we immediately add S. But with that verb, for example, as you can see here, the verb study is not uh, preceded by a vowel, so here in this case, we add, uh, uh, we change the Y letter into I, E, S. And now, in regard of negative sentences and how can we make negative sentences in the simple present tense? So, 
Again, with the same uh, pronouns, with the same subject pronouns, we're going to keep them uh, 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 for uh, uh, as long as we use the simple present tense. With those uh, four subject pronouns, I, you, we, and they, we use don't. I don't speak English. You don't speak English. They don't speak English. So we use don't with those four subject pronouns. And we use doesn't with the two subject pronouns, he and she. We said he doesn't speak English or she doesn't speak English. So if you want to make negative sentences or negative statements uh, using a uh, symbol present, we should add don't or doesn't. And each one of them must uh, comes with uh, a certain pronoun as we have explained with the uh, uh, verbs. And also, not only this, but also with questions. So as you can see, here we have uh, the same uh, subject pronouns. We can use them in affirmative sentence, in a negative sentence, and also in questions. So in questions, we have uh, the subject pronouns uh, you, we, and they. We use them with do. And with he and she, we use uh, does. So the questions will be like, do, do you speak English? Do you speak English or do they speak English? So this is how can we make a yes or no question in the simple present tense. Also, with, if we're using uh, the subject pronouns uh, uh, he or she, we would use the question or the question word does. So we will have questions like does he speak English? Does she speaks English? And as in each grammar rule that uh, uh, when we study a yes or no question, we have the same form of answers. So here we have the short answer. Either we started uh, with uh, yes and with the same pronouns. Yes, I do. Yes, we do. Or yes, they do. And also with the uh, pronouns that uh, are uh, he and she, we would say yes, he does or no, she doesn't. The same goes for no. Imagine that we're here we're, we are making a, a negative sentences. No, I don't. No, they don't. Or no, he doesn't. No, she doesn't. So this is how can we make affirmative sentences using the simple present tense and also a negative sentences and question. And remember that the key here is to know the subject pronouns and which one of them that uh, uh, accept changes, making changes, and which one of them do not. So, now we will move to the other part of our uh, grammar rule for today, which is adjectives. And in English, we usually uh, use adjectives before nouns, and also after the verb to be. Let's have a look at those two examples. So the first example here we have, Uncle Peter has a long beard. Uncle Peter has a long beard. So here the adjective is long and the noun that comes before the adjectives is beard. So notice here that we use the adjective before the noun. The other example we have is history is interesting. History is interesting. And here the adjective is uh, interesting and the verb to be is, is. And in this case, we can also use the adjective after the verb to be. And we made an example like these. Uh, we made different examples like this in the last lesson where we did express our opinion about different school subjects. We said, for example, math is challenging. English is easy. We talked or we make uh, sentences like this in the last lesson and also we have talked about description of people when we say for example Matt has a brown hair Matt has a brown hair so here we can or we did make uh, similar sentences to this so now I'm going to ask you to describe people that you know make any description that uh, you can think of for people you may know, maybe your classmates, your family member. I'll talk uh, uh, first. For example, 
My brother, my brother has a brown hair. My brother has a brown hair. So here the word brown is an adjective and this is a noun. So an adjective comes before the noun. Also, my friend, my friend is thin and athletic. My friend is thin and athletic. So here I also uh, describe my friend. So you can think of people you, uh, you may know and make a, a description or give a description about them. Now, would you please open your books on page 12? Would you please open your books on page 12 as we're going to have a very interesting uh, exercise. So the exercise we have on page 12 here, as you can see, this is the school schedule, the school table for our friend uh, Ahmed. Ahmed is a high school student and he has shown us uh, his uh, table or his schedule of the school. So let's uh, read this schedule and try to elicit some information. So as you can see on the left here we have the period so or the classes. So the first period or the first class will be English with Mr. Smith and the second period or the second class will be history with Mr. Al Halawi. And the third period or the third class will be math with Mr. Dobbs. And the fourth period or the fourth uh, class will be French with Mr. Morris. And the fifth period or the fifth class will be science with Mr. Fethi and Mr. Al Jahawi. So here we have the classes and here we have the teachers who teach, uh, who teach those classes. And here we have the days. Here we have Sunday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So what do we need to do here? If, for example, if Ahmed on Sunday, on the first period, is taking English, we will see the check mark uh, uh, at this uh, item. And if his example, uh, for example, he is uh, taking uh, uh, history, if I ask whether he's taking history on uh, Sunday for the second period, and here we see it, it is empty, then we would say no. So just to have a good look at this picture or at this table because we're going to have different questions about it. And let me start with the first one. So here we have, we have a question about this table. Let's read them question by question and have a look again at the table and decide. And don't forget that we should use our rule in answer. For example, our uh, short uh, our short questions uh, and the way we answer short questions. So I'll give you an example for the first one. Does Ahmed take Spanish? Does Ahmed take Spanish? So we go back to the table and we see whether he takes Spanish or not. So let's see, here are the, those are the subjects. Here we have English, history, math, French, science. Hmm, so there is uh, uh, no indication of Spanish. So we'll go back to the uh, question and we will write the answer. No, he doesn't. He takes French. No, he doesn't. He takes French. This is how can we make questions and answer as well in the simple present tense. Now it is your turn to do number two. Let's read number two. Does he have French on Saturday, on Sunday? Sorry, does he have uh, uh, French on Sunday? So we'll go back, we'll see the Sunday table, okay? And with the French uh, uh, class or the French subject, here we see the check mark. So we'll go back again and we write, yes, he does. The third question. Does Mr. Dobbs teach history? Does Mr. Dobbs teach history? Now we'll go back to the list of the subjects and also with teacher's name. And we see the one who teaches history is Mr. Al Halawi. So we'll go back to the question and we will write, no, he doesn't. He teaches uh, math. The fourth one, do Mr. Fathi and Mr. Al Jahawi teach science? We'll go back and uh, to see the science subject. And yes, Mr. Fathi and Mr. Al Jahawi teach science. So we'll go back to the question and we write, yes, they do. 
So these are the answers of the first uh, or the first group questions. Question from one until uh, question number four. Now let's have uh, more questions. Question number five. What subject does Ahmed have last uh, on Tuesday? What subject does uh, Ahmed have last on Tuesday? So now we'll move to different kind of question, not yes or no question. Those are informative question. They're not looking for yes and no answer. They are looking for information. So the first question number five, what subject does Ahmed have last on Tuesday? So on Tuesday, let's see the uh, last uh, subject uh, Ahmed uh, will have is uh, science. So we'll go back, we say, he has science last on Tuesday. He has science last, his last class on Tuesday will be science. Number six, what subject does he have three times a week? What subject does he have three times? So not once, not, the, uh, not twice, three times. So here we can see the subject that he has three times a week, we can see here French. So he takes it on Sunday, on Tuesday, and also on Thursday. So we'll go back here and we write, he has a French three times a week. Three times a week. Number seven, what subject does he have every day? What subject does he have every day? So here we can see different subject that he have uh, uh, every day. Let's see the answer. The subject he has every day is English, math, and science. He has English, math, and science every day. And the last one, what does Mr. Al-Halawi teach? Here we go back to the uh, subjects and uh, their teachers. Here we can see Mr. Al-Halawi teaches uh, history. So we'll go back again and we write, he teaches uh, history. So this is a very interesting table and you can also make similar question to your own table. You can write down the names with the same format as you can see here. With the same format, you can write down uh, the name, uh, the days, and also the classes, and also the subjects with their uh, teachers. So now we're going to move, uh, or we're going to turn to page 13. Turn to page 13 as we're going to have uh, uh, a final exercise. So on page 13, you can see a pictures of different teachers. And each one of them has a different look or different appearance. So what we need to do now is we're going to read the, this text about them and we're going to add the description uh, that fits uh, uh, them. So have a look at the picture. Ahmed is writing about his schedule and his teacher complete uh, his description. So Ahmed is going to describe uh, his teacher. Let's help him out. How? By looking at the picture on page uh, 13. So the picture on page 13, we will see uh, pictures of teacher. Let's read this text and uh, having a look, we can complete it with uh, uh, what Ahmed uh, wants to add. I have uh, classes from Sunday to Thursday and I have uh, six teachers. Mr. Smith, Plank, English. So here, Ahmed wants to tell us that uh, Mr. Smith is very good. Mr. Smith is teaching English. So since we're using the simple present tense, we would say teaches, teaches. Mr. Smith teaches English. Let's continue. He has, now he is describing his teacher. He has plank hair and blue eyes. So have a look on your books, have a look at Mr. Smith and tell me what kind of hair does he have? So we can say that he has, by the looking at his picture, he has a short black hair and blue eyes. Let's continue. He gives a lot of homework. Mr. Al-Halawi is the history teacher. He is plank and he has plank hair. So here we have two description of Mr. Al-Halawi. 
So have a look at the picture of Mr. Al Halawi and help me to complete this one. So we can say he is tall and he has what kind of hair? He has a brown hair. He has a brown hair. Now let's continue. Mr. Dobbs teaches math. He always plank a jacket and tie. So have a look at uh, Mr. Dobbs who teaches uh, math. What do you think he wears always? Very good. Here we can add. He wears a jacket and a tie. And he is a very good teacher. Mr. Fethi and uh, Mr. Al Jahawi plank science. So we learned that for the planks that comes before subject, we added the verb teach. So Mr. Fethi and Al Jahawi, they teach science. Mr. Fethi has a short black hair and Mr. Al Jahawi is short. And he has a plank brown hair. So have a look at Mr. Jahawi, what kind of brown hair he has. Very good, he has a short brown hair. They are very strict and French is my favorite subject and Mr. Morris is our teacher. He has plank hair and blue eyes. So have a look at Mr. Morris. What kind of hair does he have? So Ahmed said that he has a short brown hair and he is a lot of fun. We plank French in class. So French is a language. And what is usually the verb that we use with a language? Very good, speak. So we speak French in class and I send emails to my friends in Canada in French. So these are the answer of this exercise. It's very interesting to have a look at the teachers and write about their descriptions. And now we have reached the end of our lesson. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.